one of the hardest things that the film relied on working was the two robots. So um, we started with R2-D2. I suggested a carpenter, Bill Harmon, who made all the props for the Monty Python films with absolutely no money. So we hired him and he um, came on board. We, it's a long story, but we found Kenny Baker. We measured him up and we built, this was the second one made. The first one was too big. This was the second R2-D2 made. Bill had some marine ply at home, which was the wood that goes on boats that he could steam and bend, so he made it circular. And um, on a rough, actually it's on an old Monty Python call sheet, they sketched out the legs. And um, Bill made these legs that could swing and we'd worked out if we put his legs down through the sides we could probably get him to work it was all theory at this point it was beyond Bill to put a head on so um, I went and found um, an old rifle lamp in Lee Electrics who owned the studios where they kept all their lighting equipment and um, that was in a junk pile so I sent Bill Harmon around to buy it because I knew they'd charge me more being the set decorator and he got it for 10 shillings and we stripped the insides out and that made that fit so we had a head for him and then um, I found a box of junk at a hire facility called Trading Post found these air nozzles and lamps that came out of an old aeroplane which I think was a Dakota but I'm not sure and I started adding those in George one day said, could we, I need R2 to hang on to a pole when he's in danger. Could you put on a knife and fork kind of thing on the front? So I, by now I'd got a shorthand with George. I knew when he said something, I knew what to do. So they gave me some wood and I took it home with a knife and I carved that little arm there myself at night. And then Bill stuck that in. And the other bits are um, little bits of junk that I found that we stuck on. And that was, R2, that was the beginning of R2-D2.